Hey there, Lonnie Stevenson. I am joined today by Steve Tickner, Executive Director for the Havasu Balloon Festival and Fair, and Gary Moore, the Balloon Meister. This year, 2024, golly, 13 years, is it? Yep, this is our 13th uh, annual event. And our dates this year are? Our dates this year are January 18th, it's a Thursday, and that goes all the way through January 21st to Sunday. And we've got uh, an entire lineup of events, not just balloons flying, but all kinds of stuff going on. Oh yeah, so much more than balloons. Uh, balloons, uh, at the very best, uh, if we're lucky with the weather, they'll uh, do two ascensions per day on Saturday and Sunday, uh, and then um, and uh, also on Friday. And uh, other than that, we have live music. Uh, we have a new BMX uh, uh, bike demonstration. Nice. That'll be kind of fun this year. Uh, we've got, of course, our, our night glow, which is hugely popular. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah, then that starts at 6.30. Uh, we have some really great local bands, uh, some great uh, bands out of L.A., uh, one of them being our Saturday night uh, band is going to be Dog and Butterfly. They are a heart cover band, so that should be really nice. fun. Yeah. Nice. Now if we could just arrange a Pink Floyd cover band, right? Yeah, maybe next year. Golly, you're going to have to work on that, Gary. Um, we have an incredible food court, again, I'm sure. Yep, food court. We have three beer gardens. We have a VIP tent that uh, serves, uh, serves hard alcohol as well. So uh, pretty much something for everybody. And then coming up this Saturday, the 13th, is... Um, we have our uh, vo volunteer day. Uh, every year we have our volunteer day for all the volunteers that have already signed up. They can come down and get their t-shirts and pins, uh, meet their chairperson uh, for whatever uh, job they're doing. And uh, also, uh, right now, we're, we still need about 300 or so volunteers to fill uh, some mm -hmm. extra shifts. So um, Everybody get out there and help out, you know? It, Everybody get out there. It, exactly. So uh, you can either sign up online or just come on sh down to the London Bridge Resort Convention Center on Saturday morning between 9 and noon, and uh, we'll find a job for you. And the volunteers get what when they... A uh, T-shirt and a pin. T-shirt and a pen, but they also get a wristband. Oh, a wristband, yes. Thank you for that. And that gets yes. them in to enjoy the festival when they're not working. Correct, and that, that wristband is good for all four days. You flew earlier today. Yes, we And have. I know Balloon Meister means a lot of things, but today it's special because you took off from one location and you landed where you took off. Yes. That you know, is a Balloon awesome. Meister. <laughs> sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug, you know? <laughs> and today I was I was the uh, windshield, yeah. You got your so, special pack. But it was, it was good. We had three other balloons in town. You know, the guys that come out here for the festival, They've their time out here extends each time they come out. They start coming out earlier and stay after the event. So over the next at least the next month you'll be seeing more than just me flying in the air than, than as usual but during the festival you have a pretty big job yeah it's it's uh it's part it's my part is the balloons you know the lions club and rotary and the and the these guys take care of everything else you know and my my responsibility is with the balloons we want to make sure we get them in the air only when it's safe we want to make sure they have all the pertinent information you know to fly safely and be here in town and some of them will there'll be some new pilots again and we have several special shaped balloons coming in again and the only place you'll get to see those will be out here on the on the field together and if they do fly you might see them out there but if you come to the event you'll get to see all of them in a group and uh, get some pictures but your day starts gates open at six and your day starts i will be out here right after the gates open you know we do weather checks we do all that kind of stuff we uh, find out how many passengers we're going to have and we match people up with pilots that can fly and typically they want to try to get their sponsor rides because each pilot has a sponsor we have a lot of great sponsors here in havasu that do that and so we want to get them all matched up so i choose not to fly during the festival just because it, i just concerned that if something happened i had to reply really quickly or respond really quickly then i would be in the air and i wouldn't be able to do that so i've chosen all the times i've been i've been the balloon meister here every time except for two years the first year and one year in between i took a year off but we uh we just want to be sure everything's safe that's our number one goal is to make every keep everybody safe and there's a lot that goes into that initial pilots meeting before it's decided whether we're going up that 
morning or yes that i've afternoon. got a i've got a couple good guys that come and one of them is uh uh what's the dale and dale show uh, dale ritchie out of canada he's my weather guy he gives the weather briefing and then dale wong he helps with that because he's got one of these theodolite measuring things where you put a little balloon up and they track that and it prints out what the wind's doing at different levels we have to be very safe here we have to be very conservative when i fly here through our winter season you know you you're going to be landing on side streets and in between you know small Small parking lots and these kind of right. small spaces and with any wind that's very difficult to do with these these balloons of this size and we got to be careful to the to the west is not a lot of i mean we've got a lake but it's not the optimum exactly. landing area and we and, and we've <laughs> we've trained boats from the very beginning to be out there on the lake to assist them if the wind's really slow they can go out and play over the lake get a tow back into the land on the side of the land and uh, their crews can get them there and um, drones is always a, um, a subject that comes up. We try to avoid, we do, really don't want drones here on the festivals. No, site. you know, we, we could we could go and get an FAA waiver and we would control the airspace and then they, they could not fly, but we would like to ask that they don't. Uh, down here on the field, they can't because of State Park, you cannot fly drones and and if the Lions Club and Rotary are paying money to re, you know to use this spot, then they kind of can set the guidelines. But out there, just if you, if you feel like you have to fly a drone around these balloons, don't get close and don't make something happen because you have some obligations also to avoid aircraft. So that goes two directions. And it's safety for, for both parties. Exactly, exactly. So um, the night glows are scheduled for... Thursday. Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. They'll start about a, a you know half hour to an hour after sunrise. We try to give it as much time as possible. That's when the winds will just start decreasing if, if they're going to. So we want to make sure we get, get it to a point, and we'd love to have some really good glows again. And the, the other big question that I see quite a bit is, is why do they fly only at like 7.45 in the morning and 4.15 in the afternoon? That is when the winds are the most favorable and the calmest before the sun in the morning starts heating things up, creating those d dust devils and the thermal activity. And then in the evening, as the sun gets lower, that same kind of activity lays down. And so that opens windows for ballooning in the early morning and late evening, but we don't fly in the middle of the day because we can't control the up and downs anymore. And they have to be down by the time the sun By sets. sunset. You, have to, you can't launch before sunrise and you can't be in the air after sunrise. And the pilots, if they have spaces available and they want to carry paying passengers they will register with them and you got to get out here early and get yeah. in line because there's never going to be as many spaces as there are people it's first come first served first come first served and we don't do any bookings ahead but there is also the opportunity for tethered rides as yes well. weather permitting all, everything is weather permitting i just can't stress that enough everything is weather permitting you know we have to keep this equipment and these and the people in the balloon safe and so that's our number one goal always but with the tethered balloons i've seen them out here and they've done you know practically all day before some days they can't go at all but it depends on the weather but you can get a little bit of an experience of what a balloon ride is like by getting in the tethered balloon getting up 50 60 feet and getting a little view and just feel the lift of the of the balloon and what it's capable of doing now now steve when we talk about weather permitting for the balloons itself that that's just for the balloons themselves but Correct. Yeah, We're I mean the rest of the rest of the event else. goes on. In fact, uh, that was kind of the story last year. Um, you know, it was a little too windy for the balloons on most days, but it wasn't really too windy to come down and have a great time. I mean, uh, it was there's kind of a fine line between if you can fly or not. But uh, you know, uh, down here uh, it was it was great. It was very enjoyable, and uh, we actually had about twenty thousand people come out. Uh, and enjoy the the festival last year. So we're hoping uh, we get get that number again this year. Tons of vendors. Ten, tons of vendors. Yeah, uh, food. Uh, uh, regular vendors. There's an art village. Uh, we'll have displays from uh, automobile manufacturers and side by sides and all that. There'll be um, lots of stuff. Carnival to see. again. Carnival. Yeah. And the nice thing about the carnival. Uh, this year, it's moving onto the blacktop from the dirt parking area that it was on last year, and uh, that's going to allow for bigger and better rides, is what they tell us. Uh, so Good. hopefully, have some more thrills and fun and uh, something different than we had last year. And for those of us around Havasu, we know where the Balloon Fest is, but if you're coming from out of town, yeah, yeah. So we're at uh, Lennon Bridge State Park, Windsor Four, and the address is technically is uh, 171 Lennon Bridge Road. Uh, the Hampton Inn is a familiar landmark, and we're standing right behind that right now. So. 
if you see the Hampton Inn, we're right behind that uh, between the Hampton Inn and the lake. And parking. And parking. So we have several off-site uh, uh, parking sites available. Uh, we have uh, Mojave Community College, uh, the Lake Havasu High School uh, baseball field parking lot, and also Pima Wash parking lot, which is uh, right kind of by downtown. And uh, those shuttles run uh, every 20 minutes or so. Um, there is also parking in the swap meet area across the street other than Sunday, because uh, right. the swap meet does go on on Sunday. But uh, the rest of the week, I mean, you can park over there and walk across. Uh, a lot of people find it very convenient just to take a shuttle from one of the other sites and, and drop you right at, the, right at the gate. Shuttle brings them right up to the front gate. Absolutely. And it runs every, what? About 20 minutes or so. 20 minutes yeah. or so. Okay, uh, once the festival is done and you guys uh, collect all the receipts, what goes on with uh, with the money? Because you yeah. guys give away a ton. Yeah, we do. We, we do give away a significant amount. Um, and first of all, I'd like to, to just take a second to recognize our title sponsor, Anderson Toyota. Uh, those guys have stepped up every year, uh, not only for the Balloon Fest, but so many other things in town. So our, our thanks goes out to them. Uh, but uh, that being said, uh, we have a lot of other great uh, sponsors and partners as well that uh, really help us out with this event. Um, once uh, once the proceeds are all uh, handled, and by, and by the way, we're all volunteer driven. Um, there's nobody that's paid on our staff. So um, all the money, all the proceeds go to charities here locally, and that is uh, through three Rotary Clubs, a Lions Club, and a Kiwanis Club here in town. And the money's divided up equally. Uh, last year, each club got $40,000, which was really wonderful. So $200,000 wow. went straight back into the local community, and it does all stay local. And running total for the 12 previous years? For the 12 years, uh, yeah, we're a little over $1,450,000. So That's just incredible. a really great amount of money. That's incredible. Gary, uh, you got a lot of friends that come in from, from around the country that seem to always come to Havasu. Yeah, they, they uh, well, they live in places that aren't quite as nice as this, usually, you know. I got up this morning to fly and look at the weather, and I looked at the weather back in Danville, Illinois, where, like, Dave and Kathy are yeah. from that area, and, and it was actually warmer there than it was here this morning. Wow. So that's kind of unusual, but, but they come out here on a regular basis. We've got them from Wisconsin on a regular basis, Missouri, um, Illinois, Indiana, so it, it's, a, it's a good group of people. We always try to get the pilots we know we can depend on and count on to fly safe and and play well with others you know and, their sponsors and, all. and the pilots are always great people they're always welcome to have conversations with people but there's some certain etiquette we should probably follow as we're around the balloons yeah just be really careful especially when the inflator fans running in the field they should have someone assigned to that anyway but watch your kids around. make sure they don't get you know into there and a lot of little guy little guys want to come up and try to punch the balloon it's not a punching bag you know <laughs> and they're, they're more than willing to have the have, have people help them do that and if you're out there driving and you start watching the balloons pull over and don't let yourself get in an accident <laughs> while you're watching that and I, I wanted to say something else about the weather when he was talking about the other activities you know you know, sometimes you'll see the weather on the ground it just looks like a gorgeous day and you won't realize that a couple hundred feet up the winds are really going fast and in a bad direction and so these are all the decisions we have to go in but if you come out here a lot of times these like I said these pilots are all really good people they're all professional pilots they come out here and they'll inflate their balloons and, and have them stood up on the field even the shapes will do that you know according to the limitations of the conditions but sometimes it looks like a really great and people go why aren't they flying and they're not flying because the upper winds aren't right. One and of, we want everything to be right. One of the great events in the morning is, is after you have your pilot meeting and it's decided whether we're flying or not or whatever, is, is there's a ceremony that goes on every morning. Yes, flag raising ceremony. Someone does the national anthem. If the weather permits, one of the balloons will launch with the American flag. And while the national anthem's being played or sang or whoever's doing it, and uh, it's, uh, it's a really good event. It's a really uh, nice way to start the day. It is. And if the weather doesn't permit for the balloon, then and we'll get the flag up somehow and we'll stretch it out and they're going to go into a little more detail this year about explaining how that flag is folded and and some different things and extending that a little bit and it's a really good thing to see and participate in it's an incredibly emotional ceremony e each day last year that i uh, attended the event it just had the same emotion every morning it just never gets old and if you get a chance at least get out here once for the flag raising ceremony, I, I yeah, I these these guys, these guys right. that perform that are just really, uh, you know, you know, it's heartfelt when they're doing it. Yeah, it's very very cool. 
Steve, talk a little bit about the admission prices for this year's festival. Yeah, admission prices are the same as they were last year. Uh, it's uh, $20 for a wristband, and that wristband is good for all four days. So it's really, it breaks down to five bucks a day. There's not a better deal in town. Uh, we also have VIP uh, passes, which get you admission, and then also access to our VIP tent that has uh, some meals uh, and um, you know snacks and coffee and so forth. So. And long after the balloons have, uh, have, we've had our night glow, there's still entertainment going on down in the food court area and on the main stage? On the main stage, yep. Yep, we'll have bands there about probably three times a day, uh, most days. And so there's there's always something to do. We've got live demonstrations, canine demonstrations, flight kite, uh, kite flyers, uh, like everything else. Uh, you, yeah, you I saw want. there was what, a pretty what the list. kid admission, the children admission? Uh, under 10 is free. There you go. Yep. So under 10 is free, $20 for the weekend. If you get down here after seven o'clock after though. seven o'clock there's no charge so um, you know we'd, we'd like to keep the party going so to speak so uh, after the glow is over we want people to come down and enjoy uh, enjoy the music have a beer hang out uh, enjoy the carnival and all that kind of stuff so if you come down after 7 p.m. Uh, each night uh, you can get in, in for free and don't worry about grabbing something to eat before you come down because there is an entire food cart with something for everybody. tons of food vendors yeah you get great variety this year Stay tuned here to the Havasu Balloon Fest Facebook page and we will update you in the mornings and in the afternoons after the pilot meeting and give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down, let you know whether balloons are going up in the air or not, but that still doesn't mean that you come on down and enjoy the exactly. festival, but some people like we to try, go out We try to keep you updated as much as possible, you know, there's no, we don't, we don't want people getting out here if they, if they, they're, they, you know, if they're, their whole determination is to see balloons fly and we're not going to fly, we'd like for them to have that information, but come on out and, and enjoy and you know I always kind of hate saying this out loud but our extended forecast looks really good for our weekend. You're gonna you know? it, Gary. You're gonna <laughs> it looks it. really good for our weekend right now so we're gonna give it a best shot and and keep our fingers crossed because we always hear this from people they immediately jump down our throats oh it, you never fly you're on the wrong weekend you need to change it all that sounds good in theory but it's not really based in fact we've had years where we did every single inflation every single glow we did every everything we had years we did four out of five or seven and we had but we've only had one year out of 12 years that we didn't fly one time right. and last year i think we flew once and the year before maybe once so we're due for a good one and we're yeah. fingers are crossed for it <laughs> well the theme this year is as on steve's uh, shirt is is let's soar in 24 let's uh let's hope we can do that yes. this year again we want to thank anderson toyota for t being the title sponsor to this year's havasu balloon festival and Fair. And, and these pilots come out here to fly. They don't come out here just to hang out and not do it. Well, they love to show off. Balloon pilots are show offs. We want to show <laughs> off our balloon. We want to treat people to that experience. You know, the very first year we were here, the first event, we only had one flight that time too, and it was the very last one. That flight was the first time anybody had seen more than one or two balloons in this town ever, and it was a great experience, and it really sold this event, and it continued on. And we've had good years, and we've had not so good years, but even the not so good years. Years. They raised up around the same amount yeah. of money through yeah. the beer tent and through the other activities. And so those charities still do well even when we don't fly, but we want to fly. They, I never saw so many disappointed faces. It always almost looked like Christmas was canceled around here a couple of times out of the pilots meeting. Everybody was exactly. just like, golly sake. They come to fly and they come. some of them come from a lot of miles away at their own expense to come out here and they get some benefits yeah. for being here, but it's still a long way away and some of them are two or three nights and hotels and days driving across the country to get here. Yeah, well, we are going to soar in 24 just just like Steve's shirt says, that's the, that's what I'm going Get off out. of. I want to thank Steve. I want to thank Gary. I'm Lonnie. Again, stay tuned here on the Havasu Balloon Fest Facebook page for updates throughout the event. Uh, go to the website if you'd like to volunteer. There's yeah, still if you can time. get out here and volunteer, that would just be so awesome because it doesn't have to be all three days or anything, but you could actually get assigned to a balloon if you're free for the weekend and, and learn all about these balloons and be up and close and personal with the pilots and all. And just always remember to just listen to your pilot in command and do do what he wants you to do. Or she. Or she. Or yeah, she. Yeah, there's some... There's some women pilots. You're going to get us in trouble there. Uh, too. Well, it wouldn't be the first time I got in trouble with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. I appreciate you again. The 20th or the 12th, 13th annual 
Havasu Balloon Festival and Fair presented by Anderson Toyota coming up on January 18th to the 21st. We look forward to seeing you all out here on the balloon field.